Hello, my name is Evelyn de Leeuw. Some of you may know me. I do stuff around health, political science, urban health, healthy cities around the world. I'm honored and delighted to, uh, to have been asked to uh, give a brief introduction to today's session. As I have a history in healthy cities, I think um, I would be well placed to reflect on a few things before you kick your session, your important session off. But why would cities be bothered with health? Why would local governments care about health and investing in health in international diplomacy? The answer to that question is the determinants of health. This is the picture that was made famous by Jöran Dahlgren and Margaret Whitehead, and it describes how people are driven by their own age, sex and constitutional factors when they're healthy, but different areas, peels of the onion, so to speak, of lifestyle around that, and lifestyle is determined by social and community factors, which are driven by living and working conditions, which are shaped by general socioeconomic, cultural and environmental conditions. Now, this already shows how cities shape most of what determines our health. Sir Michael Marmot, a famous uh, figure in the international discourse around determinants of health, created a slightly different perspective on this in work that he did with a large commission for the World Health Organization. And he looked at all of these things in a slightly more complex and abstract way. And he looked at governance, macroeconomic policies, social policies, public policies, and values as the structural determinants of health and the social determinants of health inequities. And again, you would almost immediately see how local government has a role to play in these things. And then of course, there's other factors about our responsibilities as individuals and as communities in shaping the context for health and how that impacts on equity in health and well-being. This was recognized early enough by the World Health Organization when they started shaping their Healthy Cities program. Trevor Hancock and Len Duhl in 1986 were asked to write about the, the factors that create healthy cities. They did so in this little booklet promoting health in the urban context, only 50 pages, but it is a, a rigorous review of the international literature, both in urban planning, in design, in city governance, as well as in, uh, in health and the determinants of health. It was a very early but very visionary perspective. What they came up with was that cities can pursue 11 qualities if they want to make their cities healthy. And these 11 qualities are these. I'm not going to read them out here, but it's, it ranges between a clean, safe, high quality physical environment to the provision of healthcare services where that is appropriate in the local governance structure. It's interesting that of these 11 qualities, only two directly talk about health and healthcare. All the other factors contribute to our health and are shaped by city governance and by communities living in those governance areas. You might wonder, in the, in the years that have gone by since 1986, has nothing changed? Of course, things have changed. There are differences and we have moved into a new era, the era of the Sustainable Development Goals. And therefore, when they were launched, we were interested in mapping the Sustainable Development Goals against these 11 qualities. And we found an almost direct alignment between the 17 SDGs and the 11 qualities of a healthy city. When we go back to the original work by Len Duhl, that stemmed back to, to 1962, Len wrote about the city as a living, breathing organism. And if the city was healthy, the people in the city were healthy. It expands, it contracts, 
but with green spaces, with good mobility, with a healthy infrastructure, with a socio-economic situation that is good for all, you would in fact create a healthier city. Now, that brings us to COVID. We did actually write about healthy cities in the current age of COVID and uh, the, the pandemic that is sweeping the world. We do think that this is a challenge for health and health equity, obviously. Um, but we, we start to discover what the role of cities is in doing this right. We need to apply an equity lens to urban policy measures. And we need to consider cities as One Health reservoirs of zoonoses like the COVID virus. One of the things that is so clear about healthy cities is that it's only one of many networks around the world. We identified that WHO Healthy Cities in Europe was the first global network of cities to emerge. And there came a lot of others after healthy cities. Sustainable cities, smart cities, resilient cities, smart cities, inclusive cities, slow cities, child friendly cities, age friendly cities, happy cities, healthy cities, 2.0, creative cities, knowledge cities, festive cities, just cities, winter cities, and all sorts of re representative bodies um, on the right of this slide. And Benjamin Barber, an American political scientist, says that the world would be a much better place if mayors ruled the world and if cities would assume leadership. I say this is a mantra that the World Health Organization and UN Habitat have been spruiking for a long time now. And I think you need to make that leadership happen. How that would work, in fact, is um, the subject of, of your del deliberations today. We did a bit of an analysis that might assist you actually with colleagues from Geneva. So Geneva in more than one way. Is, uh, is a hub of global or global health. We looked at urban health and healthy cities today, and we compared a bunch of these theme city networks, and we found that there are more than just healthy cities or World Health Organization sponsored city networks that, uh, that can make a difference when it comes to health and health equity around the world. So, my position. Cities rule the world, the world rules cities, and cities rule the world. And I wish you very well in your discussions about health in cities, healthy cities, governance for health in cities, city diplomacy for health around the world. Good luck.